see if this is safe to cross. <laughs> Bit crunchy. IFAC, okay, that's your individual first aid kit. That's what you should be carrying, everyone should have one, and learn to upskill yourself, because you might not be in a position to have a ready-made first aid kit to hand. As a young Marine, I was once actually back home on leave, and between tours, when uh, a young lady had a complete freak accident in a uh, pub toilet. A mirror had broken, and a shard had actually severed her femoral artery. At that time, and I'm not gonna lie, I was very, very drunk, um, but thanks to my level of training, um, having been on tour, etc., beforehand, I was in a position to be able to assist her and managed to directly stem the bleed using just double thumb direct pressure. It's an extremely difficult subject for me to talk about, but I am gonna do this today because it needs to be spoken about and it's appropriate. At the end of that ordeal, it took 20 minutes for the ambulance to arrive and the young lady had lost approximately just under half the blood in her body. It's an extremely, extremely stressful ordeal. She's still alive today, but I didn't have any equipment with me. Um, you know, why would I? I was on a night out. Um, there'll be people here typing, well, you could have used your belt as a tourniquet and all the rest of it. I don't think I was even wearing a belt that night. All I had was my bare hands, but I understood enough and I knew enough about human physiology and I'd had enough training to understand what needed to be done in the blink of an eye. And that really, really made all the difference. And she's still alive today because of it. So it took 19 minutes for the ambulance to arrive. Bearing in mind, if you sever a femoral artery, you could quite possibly bleed out in something as little as three minutes. Yeah, it is, it's always difficult sharing that because obviously it conjures everything back up, but if it helps you to understand the impact of how important it is to stem a severe bleed like that, then, then I've done my bit. Under that heading, individual first aid kit, there comes an awful lot of stuff to think about. Individual to me is the bits and pieces that get me through my day-to-day -day out in the woods. And we're gonna take a look at some of these now. It all depends on your level of use in the outdoors as to what you're gonna roll with and why. Okay, first thing we're gonna take a peek at is this uh, life systems bag. And this was just used for um, as an individual bag for one of our teachers, in fact, when we had the kindergarten, right? So let's just put the bag down and take a little look at how easy it is to access. There we go, look, and so we've got different pouches and they're all kind of labeled up. So you've got gloves and info, bleeding and breaks, and this one says uh, medication and, and accessories. So that's kind of all broken down. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So really not too complicated. I'm also gonna make the statement that I am not a uh, fully qualified medic of any sort. I of course have uh, first aid uh, training and uh, at, during my time in the Marines was a team medic. Now I'm out here in the civilian world, uh, the level of stuff that I'm legally able to work with is much lower than that. Hence the constant upskilling and courses. Have a little think about maybe getting yourself on some courses and upskill yourself because of course all this equipment is only as good as you are. Okay next up is my chainsaw bag and this is an old Molly Blackhawk bag again I think. Uh, so inside here this is purely inside my chainsaw bag. Um, you can see there is a cat tourniquet inside of here. <laughs> Forget the date on it it's still fine. Um, okay and that's been arranged so that it's good to go and that I can deploy that fairly easily. Um, the other thing I have inside here is an Israeli bandage. Now what I've done with this one, because you're not gonna get too many chances with a chainsaw, it's pretty unforgiving, is I've already opened the Israeli bandage, opened it out fully and turned it inside out so that the pad, the blood absorbing pad is outermost. Okay, and this is how we used to roll in Afghan as well, because you've got seconds to start working on, on someone. You've got a golden hour to get them on the helo and gone. Uh, and, and hospital so um, this is how they used to roll so you literally pull this out and then start wrapping it around these are really really good um, and you can get these really really tight on people as well so I'd go and get one of those if you can um, 
Yes, it's referred to as an Israeli bandage. I, I only know it as that. If you know it as something else, leave a comment in, in, the, uh, in the box below, that'd be amazing. So that's pretty much all I'm carrying in the chainsaw bag is, uh, is two big catastrophic bleed type um, bits of kit. There's usually actually some, um, some stuff for stopping hemostatic bleeding, but I'm guessing that's probably in the shooting bag. I tend to move things about uh, according to what I'm doing. So again, you've got a, um, a tourniquet good to go on the back here. Uh, British Association of Shooting Conservation. This is my shooting bag. And inside here, there it is, is the Cellox gauze. Okay, this stuff is fantastic for packing inside open wounds and stopping bleeding quite quickly. You've got a um, Israeli bandage inside there. Uh, some more gauze, a set of gloves and I think, oh, there you go, that's what's happened. So the Cellox has ended up doubled up inside this one for some reason. So I'm gonna put that back in there now, otherwise I'll forget. Um, you've then got your uh, Black Hawk zip bag, which is just a, a carrier, really a method of carriage. So when it comes to thinking about how big this thing is, well, it really depends on what you're carrying and, and what it's going to be used for and how many people it needs to treat. But again, today is all about the individual. It's about you. So I would always say something about the size of your fist or your hand opened out would be about right. So let's have a look. Yeah. These are all about the same sort of size. Now, the humble Tupperware pot I think gets a lot of bad press, but actually, and, and, and is considered a bit of a, a, a first aid kit of yesteryear, but I think it's incredibly, incredibly useful, especially if you pack it out with the things that you're going to need. Of course, there are going to be more expensive options and there are going to be more budget options. And it's all about your level of working and, and what you're happy to go with. For me, I think the humble Tupperware pot is massively, massively underrated. Now, there'd be people out there saying that these are a bit old school and that no one carries that sort of thing anymore. Well, I do. So leave me a comment in the box below if you think that uh, the Tupperware is, is old school and shouldn't be used anymore, but cost effective, it certainly is. Perfectly waterproof, floats. It's gonna keep all the elements out of your medical equipment. Let's have a little look inside here. What I'm gonna do is take items out and pop them in the Ziploc bag, the clear bag, so we can kind of see what's gone into it. So the first thing I'd say is I've got a pair of gloves here. Next thing I'm gonna mention is I've got two types of tape here. I've treated myself, fabric tape usually, and then I've also got zinc tape. Now the zinc tape plays a double role because it's also good for the back of your heels, anywhere where you've got a rub with kit or equipment. That's pretty useful for keeping things nice and cool. Allergy tablets, cold and flu oral suspension. Okay, so you just tip that into hot water. Diorolite tablets, okay, if you get the runs, that's pretty bad. There's a needle and thread here. Tiny weeny little snap stick. You might be having to deal with stuff in the middle of the night. Some 600 milligram uh, ibuprofen, okay, to help with swelling and things like that. Standards, plasters, fold down set of scissors. These are great. A sail maker's needle. Okay, so worst, worst, worst case scenario if you end up on your own and having to do a John J. Rambo. A pair of tweezers, okay, these are incredibly useful for when it comes to getting ticks and things off, mainly off of her. Yeah, I've got some steri strips. These can be used to great effect. I had these on my face for a little while after a really bad smash up playing rugby. In the very bottom I've got an iodine gauze and underneath that this stuff here is really interesting. This kind of sticky weird stuff here, tacky stuff, this is second skin. Okay and you can put this over the back of a blister. This stuff's getting a little bit old now because it's been in the bottom of this pot for a while but still workable. It's a spongy, it is just like skin. That's brilliant and so I, I would use that. So that's kind of what's been hiding in one little Tupperware pot. When you think about it time to change the guard you could just start again I'm going to mention something very important in just a moment so i need this i'll put this to one side there really are so many different options the reality is you need to build this for you and what you use it for individually i'm now going to just show you a really really quick top tip and it's how to make a woodsman's plaster all you're going to need is one little pack of luxury tissues an item you'll probably have on you and some fabric microporous tape 
that's pretty much it other than a cutting device of some sort okay you can use a knife you could use scissors whatever when i was out in africa working in a very very remote location up in the mountains in lesotho i was working extremely hard with a bunch of other british veterans little or no gloves and managed to cut myself a handful of times there my hands were pretty beaten up and it worked perfectly and it kept my hands in the game you're going to take your tissues obviously wherever you've cut yourself if i'm right-handed nine times out of ten it's going to be somewhere on my left finger um, and what i what i tend to do okay is open these out fold them over like that twice um, the folding it that way generally fits around a finger pretty well these are super absorbent um, you're keeping the wound clean and then all you're going to do is just whip off a bit of tape you cut yourself a piece of tape off or maybe just use your teeth hopefully you can hear those sound effects okay hang that on something like that put that on the uh, apply pressure on the bit that's giving you the uh, the grief okay hold that over and just fix this down start to apply a basic bit of pressure there around the worst of it okay so I want to make sure that this isn't going anywhere be careful guys that you don't put this on so tightly okay that you actually cut blood supply off to the finger so just before you cover the top bit up just depress on your nail okay and you should see it go white and then back to full color okay that's a capillary refill test it's a great way to know that you've still got blood flow going to the offended finger okay and then cover it over and then see if you can actually cover the end of the finger right over however you do it it's up to you like i said I'm not a medic but uh this works there we go something like that is going to house everything keep out of trouble yes it looks horrendous okay so there we go so that's a woodsman's plaster 101 hopefully that's given you some better ideas as to what should go in an individual first aid kit or perhaps what one is and maybe some ideas about doing it on a bit more of a budget as well as I've said the whole way through this you've got to pack this with you in mind it's your individual first aid kit coming up the back of things like Iraq Afghanistan medicine has come an awful long way especially around trauma medicine whereas before losing a limb would have been pretty much a life instant well almost instant life limiting thing there are people alive today who are double triple amputees and that is thanks to those advances um, which sadly have come out of warfare i wish you all the best i wish you some safe travels when you're out on your adventures or wherever it is you're going to be going with your first aid kits and uh, and hopefully you won't need to use them touch wood thanks for watching today make sure you hit the like button bye yeah. <laughs>